Hi, it's Chris Watkin here, and I'm with John Cottrell, the man who is a coach for some of the leading estate and letting agents in the UK. This man really knows how to get inside people's heads and make them better estate agents. John, I've known him for many, many years. He's a man that's also helped me get where I am, and I'm in, totally indebted to him. And interestingly, last week, we were only talking, and said, he said, Chris, seems to be a lot of people at the moment talking about this employed versus self-employed estate agents. And I think many people watching this, there's plenty of people waving the flag, dissing employed agency and saying self-employed agency is the panacea. John saying that is totally the wrong question. John, you said employed versus self-employed is the wrong argument. What is the right question? Talk That's a really, it's a really good question, Chris. Um, you know, there's the classic line that um, if you're employed, you only ever have one customer, right? Which is the firm that you work for. And that when you're self-employed, you've got several customers, so that's more secure. The problem with that in the estate agency context is unless you're selling solely for property developers and you've got multiple units coming through, actually they're one-off customers. You don't have any security of tenure with your customers. Um, and the problem is that whether you're employed or you're self-employed, you're both still exchanging time for money. You, are, you both have a job. Yeah? With one of those jobs, someone else pays your salary. And when you're self-employed, your salary is down to what you earn yourself yeah? or your share of what you earn. So you're not building an asset. All you, all you can build is a job. And not, that's not worth anything. So when you retire, you just hang up your shingle and, you know, retire. But if you built an asset, you'd actually be able to sell something. Yeah, so there's a bit of a delusion going on because as human beings, if you read um, Black Box Thinking, I think Matthew Syed, says everybody thinks they're above average. And there's various players in the industry saying, you know, work for me, you can earn 100 grand, blah, blah, blah. Well, probably the top the top people can but that's not the average and to be fair and this might be sound brutal to a lot of people the average in estate agency is pretty mediocre mm -hmm. now if you'll think you're better than mediocre ask yourself what did i earn last year how many units did i sell what did i earn literally per unit do the arithmetic it's not difficult and then say to yourself am i going to do better or worse self-employed and what will my net gain per unit be and therefore, for the total units, what will happen? And what happens when something like COVID-19 or some other economic disruption takes place? And I can't sell any units for the time being. We've all seen markets go quiet and stuff like that. How are you going to deal with it if you're self-employed? Yeah, so there's some, there's some challenges there. I think the other challenge for the industry as a whole is that the reality is those self-employed positions have a very high churn rate. Be very interesting. Yeah, that's quite interesting. We, we are getting a, a lot of people that they join one company and then they swap over to another company. Yeah. And I've, I've seen people in the industry. About. Yeah, they hop, hop at annual uh, intervals. So it takes six months for them to be found out, three months for the company to figure out what to do about it, and three months to get rid of them. And then they go to the next and the cycle repeats. Yeah, I've seen people doing that kind of thing. Even in self-employed, where they're not actually the boss? No, not in self-employed. I've seen it in the employed realm, not in the self-employed. Okay. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of, there's a, quite a few of them are chopping and changing at the moment. On yeah. The employed. Well, this is the, yeah, now this is the challenge for the industry as a whole, is what we call the S-curve. Now, the S-curve refers to the state of development of the industry. Now, the online meteorite was coming in quite a long time ago. You could see it coming natural progression for every industry. Some people are still in denial about it. But if you think about it over time, you know, property's gone up. I, I did this the other day, actually. So I went back to my first house I bought in Salford in 1984 for 21,000 pounds. You must have bought it as a child, John. <laughs> <laughs> end of a three bed, end of terrace. And for those of you from that area, Earlham's of the height, 47 Park Lane. And um, I just looked on uh, a certain portal, see what the value of, you know, three bed semis or end of terraces were. 
and there's a wide range, but you could basically say that property's gone up 10 times in that time, right? The problem is that wages have only gone up three times in that time. Okay. Yeah. So real terms, your wages have gone down. Yeah. And I think you pointed out in another post, despite the rise in property prices, the decline in fees still means that in real terms, the fee level has gone down. Gone down about in real terms, about 45, 50 percent. Right. And so here's the killer bit. There's twice yeah. as many estate agents. Yeah. And yeah, so you've got more people fighting over the same amount of stock, etc. Cetera, et cetera. So, so what that's saying, if you read the tea leaves, is this isn't actually a great time to be in the industry unless you can really differentiate yourself. Uh, our friend Stella Artois, man, as I call him, genius, great strategy, stands out, is going to be booked, fantastic, right market. But for a lot of people, if you're in, um, you know, Bognor Regis or wherever it's going to be, and you've got a lot of average properties, you can't just stack yourself up with million plus properties at your 1% or whatever it's going to be. And with, you know, a relatively small number of properties sold, put, you know, food on the table for the year. So I think a lot of people need to do the arithmetic to find out actually is, does this make sense for me to even be in the industry? Because I'd argue, if, you, if you're good at sales, why are you just selling property as a self-employed person? What is there of greater value uh, with a decent frequency, pays a decent percentage? You've got to, do again, do the arithmetic. This is not difficult. I think, where else should I be deploying my sales skills? yeah because you and i've talked many times about uh, the challenges that agents create for themselves you know there's there's too much uh, just drop the fees that don't talk about value that don't educate the client all of that i mean there's plenty of gurus in the industry tell you all this stuff and yet how come so few people pay attention to it it's, it's interesting that i was talking to uh stephen brown who is a very well-known yeah, yeah. They're in the estate agency industry. When 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 Zoom calls were, were at the height when everyone was in lockdown. Yeah. And he said, Isn't it interesting that all the people on the webinars are telling you exactly to do the same thing, but we know damn well most people won't. Yeah. He's right. Okay. I mean man talks a lot of sense. What is it? Is it is it a, is it themselves? Is it their mindset? What what's the issue? What's the issue here? Well, let's, let's, I'd like to answer that a slightly different way, if I may, because uh, a lot of people talk about mindset, and I've, actually, I disagree with most of them. So I want to set a scene for you that, um, and I forget how long ago I heard this, but I think it's really true. In life, you're either making TV, you're on TV, or you're watching TV. All right? Now, when you split that down, if you're making TV or on TV, it's done by you. If you're watching TV, it's done to you. Mm -hmm. If life is being done to you, like all the people that rabbit away on social media and troll each other and all that stuff, life is being done to you, whether you like it or not. So you have to break out and understand what's the equivalent in business. And my son uh, actually taught me this one. He said, the Romans used to call it bread and circuses. And I said, what do you mean? He said, well, he said, the Romans understood that if they keep the poor fed, that's the bread, and entertained and distracted, that's the circuses, they could get on and make as much money as they wanted, and, and there would be no unrest. And if you're a pawn in that game, and I'm saying that most of the population is, you need to understand how the world's working and get yourself into a different game. And it does require a completely different mindset. Now, you and I know a few people in the industry who already have that different mindset and they're really thriving. Yeah? Mm. But those people are very few and far between. They are the exceptions. They're unicorns. If you like, yeah. If you like the expression. So I'm going to take you back to... Um, a concept that I first read about in a book called Billionaire in Training. Now, most of the, most of the guys who have heard of me or, or know me through you, Christopher, will know that I'm an action coach. 
And that book is written by a guy called Brad Sugars, who's the chairman of Action Coach. But why I mention it is one of the very few books that talks about identity. And identity is really important. In the context of employed versus self-employed, it's really important. So when you start on the entrepreneur ladder, you start off typically employed, you get a job. Very few people go straight into self-employed. But self-employed is the next level. And at that level, you're still exchanging time for money and you're still trying to get yourself paid. The level above self-employed is where you're a manager. It means you're looking after other people. But you still have a job in your own business. And quite often, even the best players in the estate agency industry, they're still managers. So we're not talking about a branch manager, an employed branch manager. We're talking about someone who runs their own business, who, who employs other people to help him or her. Yeah, or her. Yeah, because they still have a job in their own business. Yeah. Usually the last thing an estate agent will let go of is valuations. Mm. Yeah. Because every agent believes they're the best valuer. Mm. Yeah. And they, they hang on to that. Why pay someone else? I could do that. But you actually only become a business owner when you don't have a job in your own business. And funnily enough, there's an adjacent business to estate agency where that applies much more readily, which is the lettings agency. Well, the wonderful thing about lettings is, is that the money keeps rolling in. Yeah. So, and the entrepreneur, once I'm an owner, yeah, my business now runs without me, I can then become an investor where I have more than one interest. And finally, Brad's defi definition of entrepreneur at the top is where I'm actually investing other people's money. I'm playing the game at a much higher level. Yeah, everybody likes to call themselves an entrepreneur, but the distinction in your identity is really important. So for most agents, it requires a mind shift, an identity shift to go from employed to self-employed and then from self-employed to manager. Because quite, quite a few become managers, but try to abdicate the management bit because that's the bit they don't like. Hmm. And they just they like end up chasing they like, they like valuing. Yeah. They agents, because they're um, eye types on the disc profile. They're people, people. They, they love everyone to love them. In fact, the amount of agents I've seen not do very well because they're not, they're not bothered with the business side. They just w yeah. want to be a valuer and run their own business. And yeah, it's like a shit show behind them. You know, it's like a, that nothing's getting done behind them. They yeah. don't know their numbers. Oh, yeah. awful. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why they need help, right? Yeah. Yeah. So then the question is, so what's the answer? And I'm going to propose an answer. Um, and it's, there's two little uh, sort of fairy stories. Well, one's a fairy story and one's a joke. So we'll do the joke first, which is what's the difference between a cross-eyed archer and a constipated owl? Go on. You want to, You want the answer that quick? Yeah, well, I'm a, no, because you're a swine when you come and you ask me things like this, and we don't want to waste people's time with me looking at right. the crap. So, <laughs> the all right. So the cross-eyed archer shoots but can't hit. Uh... All right. Now you might say, what is this? old joke got to do with estate agents and letting agents well the estate agent can sell but he doesn't have an asset the letting agent has an asset but normally he can't sell no they're not very good at, uh, uh, they're not very good at that uh, you know letting agents are not very good at selling right they're good at administration typically yeah. now if you go out onto the open market and look at if i had to pay someone to do an administrative job I'd have to pay a certain rate according to the market. Yeah, it might vary north to south, whatever, but it has a certain rate. If I then want um, someone with high sales skills as opposed to high administrative skills, I'd probably have to pay a higher rate to get those skills. Yes. But isn't it crazy that the person with the lowest skill level in terms of remuneration from the market is the one that's building up the biggest asset? Yeah, the lettings department tends to get paid less, but they're the ones, like you say, that build the biggest asset. 
So you've got the tortoise and the hare here. If we can't deal with the cross-eyed archer and the owl, think about the tortoise and the hare. The letting agent is the tortoise, but it gets to that retirement finishing line first because it's building up passive income in its business by having tasks that it can train your average person to do well. Because isn't it interesting that most self-employed agency models don't push or suggest the lettings side of the business? They are nuts. I'm with you. This is a massive missed trick. Okay. So if I'm a self-employed agent and I'm selling both units to rent as well as units to sell, I can build up my passive income. But again, it requires a shift in perspective, in mindset to think about that. Yeah, but mo mo most estate agents, as I said, are what we call I types on the disc profile, which means they're people, people, yeah. they're outgoing, they can't be doing with the minutia. Are you therefore suggesting that they, that they should, in theory, set up a lettings agency and, and employ someone? But again, a lot of them haven't even got enough money to pay for themselves. Yeah. That's right. So it's step by step. I mean, there are firms out there that you can outsource the management to in the short term. But could that be a solution? You can outsource the management. You could buy a franchise. There's all sorts of things you could do. All, all I'm trying to do is provoke some thought and not have people be essentially busy fools their entire lives and get to retirement and ask themselves, what the hell was all that for? Because I know a lot of good people in the industry. They're just not paid very well. You know, they're good, honest people. They work hard. They're good to their customers. They do their best every single day. And they don't have anything to show for it. Now, I'm not going to say it's unfair, but it's like, wait a minute, you're better than this. So in a nutshell, what you're suggesting is, is that these self-employed estate agents should seriously consider starting a lettings book as well at the same time potentially outsourcing it to enable them to build an asset that eventually they could sell and have passive income coming in yeah that's exactly it, that's Quite exactly simple. it. But, but why do you think most aren't doing it uh probably because they never think about it probably because they think oh it's boring and it's not the kind of thing i want to do well they hate they hate detail and minutiae yeah, so you've got to hire people who like that kind of thing and you've got to get them trained. <laughs> You're asking estate agents to train letting agents? Got no, <laughs> no, I'm asking them to invest in training for the people. Mm. Is there right? anything now, you can Is... see the letting agents groaning and going, oh my goodness, not more entrance into the letting market. But the fact is most letting agents don't go out on the front foot and sell like estate agents do. So if you put an estate agency mindset on the front end of a lettings business, it's gonna grow, which is what you want. So one potential solution is, for if there's any, any estate agents out there who are thinking of going self-employed, that if there's a great person in the lettings department that you think could actually, who makes a great letting agent, you might not necessarily, you might be like oil and water together, but you know, almost combined together and come, go in as a partnership right there's all sorts of things that you can do collaborate with somebody that you know uh go and join an existing business uh joint venture with somebody set up your own business and hire somebody who's been you know a tenancy manager or uh a neg in that in that other industry there's all sorts of solutions i just want people to think about it and not just focus on really what is the wrong argument this employed versus self-employed doesn't change the end result is there anything else you want to add to this conversation and argument mm, 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 mm. let me think i think we've covered the economy stuff um the churn rate we've talked about the s curve about the industry um the only other one be then, you know, if you think you've got three choices, be at the top and make the most of it. You know, like our friend Stella Art to our man, great, well done, fantastic. Go and sell rentals and build up your passive income or go and sell something else of high value. 
But if you're just going to be one of the crowd and wondering whether employed or self-employed, I think you're asking yourself the wrong question. Thank you for your time today, John. You've been an you're welcome, absolute star. And uh, thank you for your time. All right. Cheers for now.